17, I think I read. Where when you, I got my big break. Yeah, when you mm-hmm. got your big yeah, break. Yeah, I got with, my big break out of Detroit. What was that, Mahavishnu Orchestra? That's right, Mahavishnu mm-hmm. Orchestra mm-hmm. at um, the age of, uh, excuse me, mm-hmm. I have something in my eye, at the age of uh, 17. Wow. Uh, okay. He heard me play, mm-hmm. and this is documented. Um, the reason I got the job with John McLaughlin, and I mm-hmm. tell this to, to a lot of people, and I just got off the phone with this man's daughter. His name was James Jamison, who played mm-hmm. in yes. all the Motown mm-hmm. recordings. Mm-hmm. Um, he introduced me to the fretless electric bass. Wow. And uh, he says, I want to teach you about the fretless bass. I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. <laughs> what fretless? I never seen one. It was like something from Mars, you know. Wow. And he okay. says, uh, mm-hmm. I want to show you how to play it. They want to know why I can play the fretless bass. And a lot of people don't know that James Jameson actually used a fretless and peg on some of those sessions. Wow. And everybody mm-hmm. puts all this BS out on the internet. Oh, it's the bass, <laughs> it's the defender, it's the amp, it's this and that. Jameson didn't give a damn if he was playing through a two by four with <laughs> strings on it. As long as it sound good. Right, exactly. You know, mm-hmm. and I get sick of this stuff on mm-hmm. this internet. They never saw the man play. They didn't understand his philosophy of playing because Mm -hmm. he was a classically trained bass violinist, just like Ray Brown. He came from the same mold. Beautiful. Yeah. So anyway, how Mm -hmm. I got the job is because he introduced me to the fretless bass when I auditioned for John McLaughlin back in 1973. Mm -hmm. He went crazy. He went ballistic because I had a fretless bass. And he was like, okay. oh, I'm going to call you to play. Uh-huh. And then Jaco Pistorius auditioned. He had his jazz bass, mm-hmm. and he didn't get the gig because John was, for some reason, he mm-hmm. liked the way it sounded. It sounded like a, I was playing on that chair with strings. It was so <laughs> dead sounding, you know. So wow. the next year, mm-hmm. I said, he's not going to call this black kid from Detroit. He ain't mm-hmm. going to call me. So next year, I got a call. It was in January. Mm-hmm. And he says, Ralph, this is my <laughs> Vishnu. And I was like, what? He has to call him. But that's not mm-hmm. really what shook me up. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It was who else was on the phone. Ooh, who he else said, was I on want, that call? I want you to hear him. I want, my friend wants you to play bass with him. Mm-hmm. Your friend? And it was Carlos Santana. At 17? Yes. And Ooh. the funny thing is, wow. John McLaughlin uh-huh. took me out of school. My mom let me go. I was working for Weiss mm-hmm. and Maybach in New York. And next thing I know, I'm out of there. I'm mm-hmm. flying to London with riding around in Daimler's and wow. Jaguars. Well, actually, Daimler's and Jaguars, mm-hmm. but Rolls Royce's. Mm-hmm. And I paid my mother's house off at the age of 17. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Wow. So how was, I know that experience was unbelievable, traveling you know, out of the country at that young of an mm-hmm. age. Yeah. And your mom lets you do it. Yeah, you know. she liked well, what did checks. your dad think about that? He was happy as a runaway slave. <laughs> what you talking about? He was so proud. He saw me play at the Masonic Temple mm-hmm. with uh, Jeff Beck and, and John McLaughlin. He was walking around telling me, that's my son. That's my son. <laughs> and the people, when I played in Detroit, they were hollering my name out, which that was wow. a very, very wonderful night. Uh, really nice. <clears throat> that is fantastic. So what advice would you give some of these younger musicians that kind of want to follow in your footsteps is that even possible yeah i got mm-hmm. big feet but you got you know <laughs> this size 13 d you know so what do i tell young people mm-hmm. well this is the problem we're having in the united states of america mm-hmm. our educational system has been desecrated i will tell them whatever you want to do mm-hmm. whatever subject music science uh whatever you want to get involved in, Mm -hmm. learn as much as you can. Learn the physics of the instrument, where it came from, how to play it the correct way, Mm -hmm. how to get different sounds out of it. Never be closed-minded. You know, learn as much as you can Mm -hmm. and also be a businessman. Mm -hmm. Don't take, don't play for nothing. Right. You know, so anytime you see me get playing, Mm -hmm. I get paid. And you Absolutely. know that. Absolutely. Yes, I do. Yes. Because yes. I'm going to tell you, I, I'm not, I can sit at home and watch my new television. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and I mean, I know that the babies are, you know, you're passionate, you know, about teaching the babies. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and everything. And I know the education system, they've wiped out, you know, the, the arts. 
Yeah. You know, which is horrible. I mean, I remember in elementary school, I played the flute. Mm -hmm. You know, then junior high school, I learned to write and read music. Mm -hmm. Never pursued it anymore. After, you know, after I graduated junior high school and got to high school, I'm like, oh, I'm too big for this, you know, type of thing. Um, are there any programs out here for children to to participate in if they're not offering it in school? And especially now yes, with everything uh, being remote. Well, not right now, but um, MSU has a mm -hmm. beautiful youth program right in the heart of Detroit on Woodward Avenue. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. It's really nice. Okay. And uh, they've got Sean Dobbins, who's the head of the department there. Mm -hmm. It's just a wonderful place. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sean is amazing. Yeah. Yep. So, let me see. CDs. What, what's your music looking like these days? Made out of plastic. <laughs> You're looking at you looking at his plastic. What you talking about what it's looking like? What you well, mean? I know the, the last CD was at Detroit Rising. Yeah. Oh, I, I've written a new <laughs> CD. I'm working on this one now. I've got a lot of tunes, and uh, I'm, I'm waiting for this pandemic to <laughs> kind of level out. If everybody get vaccinated, we would uh, yes have a better time with it. You know, mm -hmm. I've got some music. Uh, William Duvall is on. As a matter of fact, <laughs> that's going to be my first release off a of CD. It's going to be a <laughs> single call. <laughs> I guess I could say it. It's yes. copyrighted. Pay attention. Yes, you can. Yes, and pay you're attention. always fussing at me about paying attention. Yeah, pay attention. Mm -hmm. Now, the last CD, Detroit Rising, who were some of the heavy hitters you had on that CD? Uh, I had James Carter. Uh, my dear friend who's gone on to his reward, uh, Larry Coriel, mm -hmm. and his brother, Alphonse Muzan, mm -hmm. was on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Galen McKinney's on the drums. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, let's see who else. Oh, by the way, Guy Pratt from Pink Floyd came in and recorded mm -hmm. Flew All the Way from London to play on it. Um, let's see who else I have on it. Oh, God. Um, Zion Israel played on it. Mm -hmm. um, Ramona Collins sung the, the song Detroit. She's on it from Toledo. Oh, okay. I forgot about that uh, one. Yes. Paul Kramer. From the east side <laughs> on guitar, rock and roll. And um, who else? Oh, well, I had, um, uh, bless his heart, Glenn Tucker mm -hmm. play piano on it. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that's about it. Did I, make, did I miss anybody? I think that's No, everybody. I think you covered everybody because mm -hmm. I know the, the one song. Oh, and also, no, I got Walter White is on it. He played oh, on it, and Kern okay. Bradley wrote okay, a song. Okay, right, yeah. Lady Gaga, Cruising in the D. Yeah, I remember right. that Kern one. Bradley wrote, yes. wrote a song on it. Yes. Brantley, excuse yes. me, not Bradley. Now, now, the one song with the video, <laughs> Blue Mashed Potatoes, is that one still taking the internet by storm? It ain't taking it by storm. <laughs> it's making it rain a little bit. A little drizzle? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, I remember seeing the video, and was that QB? Yes, in, in, that, in that video, mm -hmm. was at uh, Burt's, I think it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we filmed it at Burt's. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, it was filmed at Burt's. So what was the inspiration behind that song? Because you are, you know, you, you are a character, so. What you mean I'm a character? <laughs> you, are a, you are a character in your own right. Look here. Mm -hmm. It was about this, I'm trying to get a Pfizer ad. <laughs> it's about this man. I might as well say it. Yes. He is in love with an ugly woman. She weighed 497 pounds. <laughs> and he couldn't figure out why he was in love with this ugly woman. <laughs> but you know, she was a wealthy woman, too. Mm -hmm. And a woman of means. And she cooked this man dinner. And he was sitting out at this mansion in Detroit, you know. Uh -huh. and she had biscuits and gravy and and Chateau Bion and uh, porterhouse steaks and Ooh, shrimps okay. and all the good stuff. The, the good fancy stuff, cholesterol right. was flying everywhere. <laughs> yes. Because she was big. She loved butter. She mm -hmm. bought butter by the cases. Ooh, okay. So he looked over uh, and attack. he saw the doggone potatoes. Mm -hmm. And the potatoes, he said, they were blue. Almost the color of that doggone bottle over there, Ooh, like this. Okay. They were this oh, color, blue. ladies and uh -huh. gentlemen. And he said, oh, baby, oh, baby, please tell me 
why the mashed potatoes are blue. And he looked at this big old grizzly bear woman with them <laughs> Mack truck looking eyes. And he found out that she was grinding up agar in the mashed potatoes. Mm, 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 mm. That's right. And for those men out there that never had Viagra, somebody put Viagra <laughs> in your mashed potatoes, you'd be at the zoo looking at a baboon talking about, Ooh. I never knew how sexy a baboon is. Uh, uh, well, I just and found a female it. gorilla is gorgeous. Just, oh, and that's well, what it'll do to you. No, the blue mashed potatoes. Well, let me see. I think I found it on YouTube. Well, you YouTube it or whatever. It's on YouTube. See. If we can pull it up here. Oh, it's pulled up. Yeah, let's see if it's going to come up here. So, let's see. But if not, okay, they're showing Sheila E. in an ad. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. Um, so, yeah, so now with the CD you're working on, when when, when can we expect that one? Uh, honestly, mm -hmm. I would think uh, the first of next year. Okay. The way it's done, because mm -hmm. I have to go out of the city of Detroit, I have to go to L.A., mm -hmm. and I have okay. to go to San Francisco. Michael Narada, my dear friend, is going to produce mm -hmm. some stuff on it. Beautiful. And then I've got some other people who are working on the mm -hmm. compositions with me. Fantastic. Some of them, mm -hmm. but I can't do it right now because there's a lot of travel. and Right. Mm -hmm. You know, coming in this room, I only do it for you. You see, I sprayed <laughs> it because it's very stuffy in here. Yes, it, it is. That's but when the no. sinus is acting up. Oh, I'm, I'm, well, I'm glad you're fighting through it. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's them colors is doing it. You know, you're going to be in a new Batman movie? <laughs> Y'all help me with this one. Ain't nobody out there watching. Anybody watching they this? Hopefully they are. Hopefully they are watching. Help. Come help me. Help. Yeah. So, yes, I don't know what's going on here. I was trying to pull that uh, that video up. But while I'm waiting on that one, you are watching WJZZ Cool TV. Well, I got the uh, video right here. You pull this up on Facebook, YouTube. Twitch and Periscope. I am in the studio with the one and only Ralph Armstrong. Yeah, for some reason it keeps looping the Sheila E. Oh, Sheila yeah. E. Video. Nothing against Sheila. Mm -hmm. you know, I love her to pieces. Are you taking a break now or what? We're still live. Well, damn, I don't we know nothing. Alive. Give me a cue card or something. I might have said something that was so <laughs> inappropriate. Right. <laughs> the hell kind of joint is this? Yes, we are live. And for some reason, it's not coming up. But anyway, find it on YouTube. Blue Mashed Potatoes. You can. I got it. You want to see it? I got it. Yes. Up in 30 seconds. Yes, yeah. let's see this. Let's see this. And while you're doing that one, I have to read this PSA announcement here. As we battle the COVID-19 pandemic, it's clear that misinformation can be just as deadly as this awful virus and spread just as quickly. Myths are spreading on the internet and social media, so it's important to know the facts to keep our community healthy. The vaccines offered through Wayne County Public Health are scientifically proven to be safe. It's important that each of us to get vaccines scheduled as soon as you are able. Visit waynecounty.com forward slash COVID-19 to get the latest information or call 313 Three five five seven one seven two, and I got my second shot yesterday. I got my second shot almost six weeks ago, and I had the Pfizer one. They put Viagra in my back, <laughs> and I ain't telling y'all. Don't be scared of the. But how you gonna be more scared of a damn virus than the vaccine? I ain't never heard yes. of something like this. Yes. And here, the, the miseducation. Yes, the miseducation. Put it by the screen so they can see what the first part looks like. The camera up there. It's the one right there behind you. Is it? Mm -hmm. I don't see nothing. Yep. <laughs> well, what anyway? You know. <laughs> she likes to kiss and fight. That's kind of my kind of women. Yes, your kind of women, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. So I'm trying to think of some other questions. Um, wow. You're your friend, Earl Klug. I know you've mentioned him before performing at Baker's, you know, how, how, did, how did that story come about? What do you mean, what story? About Earl Klug, remember? You know, he had the driver's license. and Oh, you and mean how I yeah. was playing? Oh, we were yeah. kids, mm -hmm. and Clarence Baker would let us play up there 
when he didn't have any major acts in there mm -hmm. on a Wednesday or Thursday. Mm, okay. And uh, Clarence uh, was just a wonderful guy. You know, he would let us get our start. And Earl, mm -hmm. I was like 15, and Earl was like 17, had the mm -hmm. driver's license. Mm -hmm. He would pick me up in his, I guess they're worth <laughs> money now. He had a 1973 green Camaro. Ooh, brand wow. new. Uh -huh. okay. Brand new. And uh, he picked me up, and we go to Baker's and play, you know. Uh -huh. And we were friends for many, many years. I did a lot of, I did about three recordings with Earl. Beautiful. On Warner Brothers, yeah. Wonderful. Frank Zappa. That's who I dedicated uh, Blue Mashed Potatoes to, mm -hmm. Frank Zappa. Wow. What about Frank Zappa? That story. Just, you know, the connection, you know, jazz and Frank Zappa. You know, some, for, for me, what I can remember about Frank Zappa, he was kind of weird and out there musically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then you, this kid from Detroit, you know, connecting with Frank Zappa and working with him. Well, Frank, I met Frank on a tour mm -hmm. with uh, John McLaughlin. Mm -hmm. We were touring every night. It was my Vishnu Orchestra and the Mothers of Invention. And he liked the way I played. So mm -hmm. after we broke up, I was, I was out of work, like, actually, like, one week. Mm, wow. But okay. first off, mm -hmm. I when my Vishnu broke up, Carlos Santana grabbed me in Narada. And I was out of work six days. Wow. And we went, next thing I know, mm -hmm. I was in San Francisco recording with Carlos Santana. Fantastic. And then mm -hmm. we played uh, Nassau Coliseum in uh, New York. And they had this mm -hmm. young guy playing a guitar. And he was really talented. He was mm -hmm. just playing. He had long hair. And I said, who the hell is this dude? <laughs> and I mean, he was really mm -hmm. good. He was just playing and strumming, and his name was James Taylor. What? Uh -huh. Oh, my and goodness. And he was wow. just fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I played, I played in the band with Armando Peraza, uh, Tom Costa, Chapito, mm -hmm. Mike, Michael Narda, and uh, um, uh, Carlos Santana. Wow. Wow. And we wow. did Winterland and mm -hmm. Frisco, you know. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I went with Frank Zappa. Mm -hmm. He called me, and he offered me a salary position. And at mm -hmm. the time, Santana wasn't touring a lot, mm -hmm. so he put me on salary. And I ended up working with the Mothers. I did the Canadian mm -hmm. tours. I did recordings that are still in his vault on uh, Woodrow mm -hmm. Wilson Drive in uh, L.A. Really? Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So how do we get those out of the vault? Uh, talk to Dweezil. <laughs> Ooh, I, I can only imagine. Yeah, how. it's just like Aretha Franklin's mm -hmm. got a lot of recordings. You know? Right, and Prince as well, yeah, you oh know, yeah. in, in the vault mm -hmm. and everything. Um, D12, a lot of people may not know that Ralph played with D12. And how did that come about? Um, it's a funny thing. Mm -hmm. I was introduced to D12 and Proof through the great jazz saxophonist Wendell Harrison, my mentor. Mm -hmm. And he said, Ralph, I want you to check out these young cats. They play the hip hop, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said, okay, Unc. You know, uh -huh. next thing I knew, I was in the recording studio with Proof, and I did his last recording before mm -hmm. he was uh, murdered. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it was called Searching for Jerry Garcia. Mm -hmm. And it was really good, really good mm -hmm. recording, something okay. I'm very proud of. And I just, that was a tragedy that he, you know, mm -hmm. died. And this young man was really changing rap music. He was incorporating a lot of m instruments in it. Because I did one of the recordings, and on there, Wendell was playing. And the, the cat is saying, yeah, we got Wendell Harrison. <laughs> and it's live shit. It's live. <laughs> and we got Triple OG on the bass, oh. Armstrong. Oh, it's my live goodness. music. Is, and that, I is that. that captured somewhere? It's on the internet. Oh, my goodness. Okay. No, because I haven't mm -hmm. heard it, so I'll have to check that yeah, out. It's, it's on the YouTube's got all that stuff. Okay, I, I will have to check that out. Mm -hmm. And kind of moving forward, who are some of the artists that you wanted to play with that you didn't get a chance to play with? Don Webb. <laughs> <laughs> No, not that I won't be happy. Come you, here. you, you would not have another record playing, uh, playing music with me. Um, I mean, I know you've played with some of 
everybody, you know, Miles Davis. I love those stories, you know, about Miles Davis, you know, but I know there's got to be. That's the only thing in <laughs> my life that you say that I wanted to play with. Mm -hmm, that you didn't get an opportunity to play with. Well, we never went on tour, Miles, mm -hmm. when I was in the band. We were rehearsing, and Miles got into an accident. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that upset me in my career because we were we were going to Montreux, Switzerland. Me and Toomey, Reggie Lucas, Al Foster, Pete Cozy, mm -hmm. and Miles went and was going to get some beer and hit a pole and broke his oh, no. he broke his leg. Mm -hmm. And that caused him to have hip problems too. Oh. He broke his leg. That's wow. why if you ever see that movie with Don Cheeto, he's limping. Mm -hmm. They didn't do it. They didn't voice it correctly, or because okay. they didn't tell people mm -hmm. why he was limping. Oh, so they and a lot of that out. stuff. Okay. People, mm -hmm. you know, people can come up with their own ideas and what they think is right, but it's different if you were there and mm -hmm. around the damn person. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that mm -hmm. stuff in that movie was true. It was only one thing that was false was that English journalist. Okay, but mm -hmm. it really made me sad because that's when I was with Miles. Wow. Okay. So after mm -hmm. that happened, Reggie Lucas called me. It was Reggie and Toomey. Mm -hmm. We ended up working with Roberta Flack. He called me to get to get with Roberta Flack. Wow. I've had, mm -hmm. I've worked with everybody I've really wanted to work with mm -hmm. in my life. I can't bring back the dead. But, right, yes, absolutely. Uh, I've been mm -hmm. blessed to work with just, I played with B.B. King. Uh, mm -hmm. I played with um, Jeff Beck. Um, God almighty, just so many people. Herbie mm -hmm. Hancock. Oh, and wow. by the way, mm -hmm. how I got the gig with Herbie Hancock. Mm -hmm. That's, I don't know, if some people are not spiritual like I am, but I really believe that was like um, divine intervention. Mm -hmm. The okay. job in, with Herbie Hancock in 1977. I had to fill some Big damn shoes, and that was Ooh. Paul Jackson who just passed the bass player. Wow, who yes, he played in yes. the Headhunters, mm -hmm. and I had to alter my style to sound more like Paul, and mm -hmm. I had to really mm -hmm. work at that stuff to get that sound and come out of the uh, traditional classical like Jameson mm -hmm. kind of thing. I had to get out of that and open up more. So I'm going dig this. I'm going to. Avery Fisher to play with Frank Zappa. Mm -hmm. Back then, they didn't have a lot of direct flights unless it was American. On a, on the United, we stopped in Chicago. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm in an airplane in Chicago. I'm in first class. Mm -hmm. And I get on the airplane, and I'm sitting down. <laughs> Guess who the hell I'm sitting down next to? Herbie Hancock. Wow. That's the yes. weirdest thing that ever happened to me. And you know what he was doing? He was going to see Miles in the hospital. He oh, said, man, I'm going to see wow. Miles in the hospital. Yeah. And, you know, he knew what was, you know, mm -hmm. Miles was telling him what he, who was in the band. Right, yes. And mm -hmm. he said, mm -hmm. man, mm -hmm. come on, play bass with me. <laughs> and that's how I got to get with Herbie Hancock. <sighs> on a flight. Wow. On an airplane. Oh, my because goodness. Because Herbie had heard me. I went on a tour with John McLaughlin and mm -hmm. Herbie Hancock. We I did a lot of tours mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. different groups. You know, we toured with another group, uh, was a rock rock group who I thought was a real good rock group mm -hmm. at the time. We were doing stadiums, mm -hmm. and that was mm -hmm. Yes with Chris Squire uh, on bass. We yes, toured with them. Yes, oh, I love that group. Mm -hmm. Yes. We did a lot of touring. Mm -hmm. So I got to meet a lot of these people. Yes, and i tell you yes. somebody else who I met. Um, God, oh, oh, he had just come here, and we mm -hmm. were good friends. I've lost touch with him, but Peter Frampton. We toured with him a lot. I love Peter when Frampton. He had a I lot used of to, hair. I used to have posters of him on my wall mm -hmm. in my bedroom growing up. Yes, Peter Frampton. Mm -hmm. Love that music. Yeah, you he, know. Was some, he was very nice. Very nice mm -hmm. person. So I've been around, exposed to just about. Man, I don't believe the things in my mm -hmm. life. You know, some, I'm not trying to be arrogant or, or anything like that, or facetious. Mm -hmm. But I've no, been I mean really you blessed. worked, and no, I mean if you earned see, it. See, I've got it. That's why mm -hmm. I've got to do a bio, and I want yes. you to help me with yes. it. Yes, mm -hmm. because a lot of the stuff I'm getting older, and sometimes I forget about this mm -hmm. stuff. Yes, I'm just like mm -hmm. the things that Aretha had us do. I work with a lot of people through Aretha. Mm -hmm. I work with Beautiful. Chaka Khan mm -hmm. through Aretha Franklin, and uh, 
there's been so many over the years. I played mm-hmm. with Diane Carroll, you know, Vic Damone. I've done right. all of the Vegas acts, you know, I, wow. to feed my kids. I had to yes. come home mm-hmm. and read music, you know, oh, work at yes. the Fox Theater with Johnny mm-hmm. Tudell Orchestra. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, that is amazing. you know, amazing. being involved with the union, they pay yes. in the pension fund. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. and thank you. Which I can't get musicians <laughs> to do is join a damn union. I know. We tired of burying your monkey behind for no insurance. <laughs> well, you know that that's one of the reasons I joined the union. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a good thing. To kind of help these musicians along the you know mm-hmm. along the way, the younger ones. And uh, I don't know who's watching this, mm-hmm. and I hope it's somebody that's listening to what I'm about to say is that I get my pension this year. It ain't the greatest amount of money. Mm-hmm. But guess what? It's for, y'all, it's for you uh, soul brothers and sisters, yes. it's a new Cadillac every year, <laughs> a Lincoln, and yes. enough to pay my rent. It ain't a GM pension, but it's yes. enough. Mm-hmm. I'm getting me a new car next year, and I'm going to throw some in an annuity. Yes, yes. It's I, enough to mm-hmm. ball. Yeah, see, oh, gee. No, what is no triple OG? That's right. Oh, yes, I forgot. Triple OG. Triple OG. That's what proof (laughs) comes. Triple OG. You know, and it's like join a union. And matter of fact, Mm -hmm. proof was a member of Local Five because he was not getting NBC residuals. Mm -hmm. They're not going to pay you if you're not in the union for reasons. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's one Mm -hmm. thing I loved about Aretha Franklin. Mm -hmm. She would always pay reusage money for television shows. I never forget. Mm -hmm. I went over a house one day over on scenic court and Rev, you want something to eat? I just cooked some steaks. <laughs> I said, Yeah, I have a steak. You know, then she said, Oh, here's your money. Mm-hmm. So, you know, she gave me a, a grand for the gear. And mm-hmm. then, oh, by the way, here's another thousand for the reusage of the program. Wow. And also Ooh. Oprah Winfrey mm. sent me a check and I hate to this day we didn't have this. Mm-hmm. So I could take a picture. picture yeah. She signs her own check. Yes, she does. Yes. And she sent mm-hmm. us a reusage check for a grand. I got it. Beautiful. But mm-hmm. it only goes to union members. So yes. my thing is this, and this is a lot of young people, oh, they're not doing nothing for me. Mm-hmm. They ain't giving me yes, no that's gig. the story that I but get. But yes. that's BS because you have to belong to something. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be yes. recording and uh, we have organizations that uh, the phonographic manufacturers, I get what matter of fact, y'all, mm-hmm. it's it's royalty time. <laughs> you know, the thirtieth phonographic pay. They already <laughs> signed up for direct deposit. <laughs> you hear? See, that's why it's important to join the union. Right, but they don't yes. understand. You have to, mm-hmm. you know. I know I'm very jo- uh, jovial. But you have to either going to be yes. be a businessman, or mm-hmm. a court jester, or a minstrel. Yes, this is a business, mm-hmm. and when you're doing television, maybe they, they you don't think of yourself being good enough to do these things. Yes, but guess mm-hmm. what? When the time comes, and then when the time comes, you're too damn old to pay in the pension fund. And also, mm-hmm. I hope everybody's listening to this. The new president, and I've been, I'm not going to tell my political, y'all might jump me, but I've been Republican for a long time. But Joe Biden just passed the Butch Lewis Act. Yes. Yes, what? Continue. You don't know about it? I heard. But well, I'm let me not, tell you what yes, it's about, educate damn it. Me. Pay yes. attention. Yes, yes, The sir. Butch Lewis Act was passed. We've been try- I've been to Washington, to the mm-hmm. Hill with it with uh, Hal Ponder, our union lobbyist. The Butch Lewis Act was passed. That means every pension in the United States of America is good, solvent, for 30 years. Even the ones that, like, uh, some people have desecrated. Now they're solvent. So there would be no reductions in musicians' pension. Mm -hmm. For 30 years, Ford, Chrysler, anybody... Hack and sack sausage. <laughs> so how do how do we change the mentality of musicians not joining the union? You know, because well, I, I, I try I have, to because mm-hmm. most of my students are young mm-hmm. union members. Okay. Ibrahim Jones, mm-hmm. yes. you know, he's he's trying to do it right. He's a businessman. Mm-hmm. He's trying to do it right. He plays at the Fox Theater. Yes, I got shoes old as Ibrahim. <laughs> 
I mean, because the conversations I've had, you know, with musicians. Look at Tyree Gardner. Yes. Marion Hayden's mm-hmm. son. He's young. He just got a, a right. COVID check from the union. Nice. He's starting yeah. out the right way. Mm-hmm. He's building something up. Yeah, because so many of them, you know, well, like you said, it's it's not worth, you know. They don't joining. understand the, the, the longevity. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do at my age? You're 65. Oh, I got to. I got to go down to Bruce and pay, get the rent money. I ain't got the money. <laughs> hey, man, you got me shut up my rent. I don't, mm-hmm. that ain't about, mm-hmm. look here. Yes. That's what it's about. Mm-hmm. If that money actually is enough for me to live in my apartment the rest of my life. Yes. I don't have mm-hmm. to go out in a damn snowstorm and with my bass mm-hmm. fiddle to play, pay to for play the damn anywhere. rent. Right, yes. Mm-hmm. You know, so they have to understand you're in a, you got to think like a businessman. Mm-hmm. And I'm proud. You know who I'm proud of? Me. No. <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm proud of you too, but Brandon Williams. Mm, okay. Hey, Brandon. <laughs> I'm proud of him. And you know wow. what? I met Brandon with D12. He was making wow. beats. He was yeah. producing. Mm-hmm. He just joined the union. He's in a new union paper. Is he? I haven't yes, seen him in Yes, he is. I'm proud of you, man. Hey, Brandon. Oh, and that's beautiful. And he's young enough that he'll be getting, you know, paying mm-hmm. the fun. Yes. Yes. You know, when I work at Baker's, I pay in a pension fund. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know. Yeah, we're going to have to put these people in a the headlock. They don't, but no, you got to think. You know who got me into this? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you something. It was a hard lesson, and it scared the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. Now, I know a lot of people, oh, blah, 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 they're going to say, and I'm going to let them hear what I'm about to say. And you're lucky it's on your show, because anybody yes. else, I wouldn't be saying this. Okay, I appreciate that. I work with Frank. Zappa. I mm-hmm. never forget sitting in his house. And we were actually in the studio drinking that deep coffee. <laughs> and he looked at me. Mm-hmm. He said, either you going to think like a businessman or think like mm-hmm. the N-word. Right. And he said that to mm-hmm. me, the N-word. And I was like, wow. what? Mm. And he said, I don't mean that to be offensive. Mm-hmm. I mean it to the way of you thinking. Right. Mm-hmm. And you got to think about what am I going to do mm-hmm. later in my life or have some kind of scrum, a business schematic, yes. he told mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. And guess what? That's what started it. Wow. How and old were you mother. then? I was with Zappa. I was, uh, I was in Frank's band. I was 20. Mm, okay. I just turned 20, mm-hmm. 19, 20. Okay, and then I know your, and my and, mother, and your mother was join. instrumental. Yeah. My mother made mm-hmm. me join. When Willie Green came down to the Latin Quarter and pulled his 38 out, <laughs> well, your boy, a car trap. You ain't in the union, you got to get out of here. And, the, you know, and I thank, I thank these guys. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, the mm-hmm. money, it's just like getting a, a big stimulus check every month. That's a beautiful thing. Well, uh-huh, you got it for, mm-hmm. oh, when, you, when your stimulus check run out, I say <laughs> it, it go forever. Yeah. I say ever. Yeah. Forever. <laughs> no, because I got my first uh, pension contribution uh, back in September. What? Yes. Yes, I did. You paid into it? I did and because I worked the uh, jazz festival. Isn't that something? Yes. That's good. See and, there? And when it came in the mail, I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, there's, they mm-hmm, made a payment right. to my pension. So thanks to our new president, our pensions are good for years now. Yes, that's a good thing. Everybody, you are watching WJZZ Cool is that TV. What this is? Yes, WJZZ this was a Disney Channel. Cool TV. Hey. Oh, never. You can see us on Facebook Live, Periscope, Twitch. So I am in the studio with the one and only bass pimp, Ralph Armstrong. <laughs> is that where we at? I just yes. ain't Walt Disney. No. Oh, no, this damn. is not the Disney hey. Channel. <laughs> No, well, help man. me. But no, th- this has been amazing. I'm, I'm always learning new things about you. Um, you you know. find out more later. Now. Yes, hubba hubba. So, Baker's <laughs> Friday and Saturday. How well, is that going? It's going good. It's, it's uh, one of the most disinfected jazz clubs <laughs> in the country. Because we disinfected the toilet, Lysol. I, we go through cans of Lysol there. No, Ralph walks in spraying. So far, spraying. we've been blessed. Yes. Nobody's been sick. Yes, he walks in spraying with his Lysol. And I got masks, and I got yes. this, my new shield with the mask. 
Okay, I need one of those. I am going to Mars next week. <laughs> yes, I need to get one of those. And I know you're coming up at uh, Dirty Dog. What is it in May? That performance I don't know. coming up in May. Yeah, no, I'm I'm keeping tabs on you, sir. Oh, I don't you know. know. I can't do that, man. My birthday coming up. <laughs> yes, and what are you doing for your thirty fifth birthday? Nothing. <laughs> I know. I don't have anything planned. Yet. Okay. Now we'll 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 figure something out. I'll sit home and cry. <laughs> oh no, no, we we can't allow you. I'm to getting do that. old, y'all. My bag are running out. <laughs> I need to re up. You see, he's he's addicted to Viagra, ladies. You no, know. I ain't got nobody using it. <laughs> <laughs> it's molded. Oh, I'm gonna make penicillin out of it. <laughs> oh, so share with us your favorite cartoon. Don, <laughs> you look like the, the Joker with them colors on that blind hair. <sighs> And the, the no, I'm messing with you. My favorite oh, cartoon. Yes, favorite cartoon. Favorite you know cereal. what it is. I love my my favorite cartoon right now is SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Ugh. Cause Yuck. there's a character in there, and I know he gonna hit me in the nose, <laughs> but that doggone octopus Squidward reminds me so much of Wendell Harrison with the clarinet. <laughs> it's like he be playing the clarinet, and I can't never concentrate. I'm trying to play smooth jazz. What do you want? <laughs> And SpongeBob be laughing. Oh, I love it. I laugh because the reason why I like cartoons because the world we're living in, everything mm-hmm. is so negative. And, yes, it and is. And the news mm-hmm. is, is, you know, I mean, if you listen to this stuff, you go nuts all the time. Yes, you I will. I mean, it's not, my country isn't the same anymore mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because of the educational systems being desecrated. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I'm, I'm telling you something mm-hmm. that's an educator, as uh, far as I'm concerned, Universities that are giving out BAs, mm-hmm. the students are on the 10th grade level of CAS Tech in 1973. Wow. That's the mm. level of education they're at. And mm. it's horrible. They don't know anything. Mm-hmm. It's really bad. Wow. So so how, how do we go about changing that? Or well, can we, we get change politicians it? politicians to not be so damn greedy mm-hmm. and invest in our schools, invest in science, books. They don't have books. Yes. I go mm-hmm. to, a, 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 like, mm-hmm. past sometimes. I, did, I bought books. I've spent thousands of dollars mm-hmm. of my own money to help the kids. Yes. Mm-hmm. And these guys, and, and what I don't really dig is a lot of the, the men who call themselves men, mm-hmm. I call them walking um, scrotums. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because you're, you're successful and you don't put nothing back. Mm-hmm. That's why I have a lot of so much respect for LeBron James. Yes, I never yes. knew he was going to be that. Mm-hmm. You got to mm-hmm. help. Yes. I got kids. I bought basses for them. Mm-hmm. We bought mm-hmm. me and Miss Wanza. We got saxophones. Yes. Both sisters, you know, mm-hmm. Barbara and Carolyn. Yes. We've got drums. We've, mm-hmm. we've been buying stuff. And mm-hmm. and I want to do something in the near future, uh, uh, hook up some kind of foundation mm-hmm. so we can help these kids. These yes. are not bad children. No, they not at all. They need guidance. Mm-hmm. They need your men to get your rectum out of the bar, put your Jaguar up, and go down there and help some of these children. Yes. And quit mm-hmm. sitting back like you're sitting on the porch with a banjo talking about it's bad. Oh, it's this bad. Mm-hmm. What have you done to make it better? Right, to, ch- to help change Be a it. man and mm-hmm. go out there and help these kids. Yes. Yeah, so and and I get pissed off mm-hmm. because a lot of the times when we do do things, I don't see no men. I only see like two men there. Right, Two yes. fathers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I know the Mendelssohn's, I know they've donated. Yeah, uh, that's right. You know, Lauren, yeah, Lauren and David, and David has, been, yes. Lauren has been fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, and it's, it's, it shouldn't be like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's to the advantage of politicians by having people ignorant. They don't know anything about science. They don't know anything about physics. They don't know anything mm-hmm. about history. I just ran into two girls. Mm-hmm. Well, not ran into, but they're um, um, my son's girl that he's mm-hmm. adopted. Yes. And they go to a high school. They don't even know who the high school is named after. It's Pershing. Okay. Now, you know anything about Persian? I don't. Mm-mm. His nickname was Blackjack. Blackjack. Wow. Blackjack okay. General Pershing. Hmm. Okay. And mm-hmm. he was the, the major, he was head of the armed forces in the United States 
1917 in World War One. They even named mm-hmm. a tank mm-hmm. after him. George Patton, they, they modeled mm-hmm. themselves after Black Jack Pershing. He was a wow. great American leader, and he wasn't a bigot, from what I understand. Mm-hmm. My dad talked about him, because my dad was, you know, he was around in that time period. Wow. Wow. And speaking of your dad, didn't you, didn't, don't they do a festival? Yep, in, in La Folla, Tennessee, in called Tennessee? the Louis mm-hmm. Bluey Festival. Yes. Yeah. Are they doing it this year, or they're not because of COVID? I don't think so. They okay. they even postponed. I got an email the other day that they postponed the um, the um, the uh, marker that they mm-hmm. have in Tennessee. Oh, yes, they're yes. making the t- state of Tennessee is putting a mile marker. So oh, now yes, yes, yes. this is mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. that that you hit a nail on the head. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is something I know a lot of people won't like what I'm going to say, but mm-hmm. I really don't give a damn, <laughs> honestly. I'm a lot like Miles, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that this state and whoever the head of the convention bureau, bureau excuse mm-hmm, me, I need mm-hmm. water, needs to get off their fat tookus okay, mm-hmm. and start promoting the arts in Michigan mm-hmm. I agree. globally. Mm-hmm. They know yes. about, I go to Germany, oh, they told us wonderful. It's, mm-hmm. I just, it's living this, it's living this Detroit. I just love Detroit. It's wonderful. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then you go to Italy. Detroit is Motobella, Motobella. We don't do anything to promote all of this great art mm-hmm. that's here. I know. Musicians. Mm-hmm. Look at this. Some of the greatest bass players in the world mm-hmm. have come out of here. Singers, rock and roll guitar players. Yes. And mm-hmm. we don't have, this is something that I would like to see before I die, is a Entertainers Hall of Fame. Yes, absolutely. We've got actors that come mm-hmm. from here. Yes, Just like yes. uh, John Witherspoon died. Mm-hmm. Ain't a plaque. No. There's nothing. nothing. Mm-hmm. He was from Detroit, damn it. Yes. Fridays. Mm-hmm. Nothing. And his family, mm-hmm. he came from a multi talented family. His mm-hmm. younger brother is Ray Witherspoon, who was a singer. He was oh, sort of like Sammy okay. Davis Jr. Mm-hmm. and a jeweler. And he wow, sung with the okay. Johnny Tudell Orchestra in the 70s and wow. 80s. Ray Witherspoon, and he was program director of Channel 50 at one time. Hmm. He did the news with Amir Makeupson. Okay, Ray Witherspoon. Yes, and his yes, other brother, yes. oldest brother, Brian, mm-hmm. was an uh, uh, insurance executive with Allstate. And mm, these, mm-hmm. you got all this talent. The talent, Like, yes. uh, 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 what's his name? Um, oh, God, David... Um, uh, from uh, uh, oh David Allen Greer. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean yes. this is ridiculous. Yes. All of these crazy artists, crazy talent. Yes, crazy talent. And there's talent. nothing mm-hmm. we need to market this. As far as I'm concerned, no disrespect intended, but New Orleans, they market, they push their mm-hmm. music, they yes. run it down our throats. Why aren't we doing this in Michigan, mm-hmm. in Detroit? We got more famous artists yes. than any other place on the damn planet mm-hmm. Earth, yes. and nobody, and these people them. sit up in yes. Lansing on their fat behinds and do nothing but argue. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because Get it done and work they together. They don't feel that it's necessary. Well, it's a so. big attraction. Mm-hmm. Actors come from here. I believe uh, Wally Cox went mm-hmm. to cast. You know, one of the great uh, okay. comedians and, mm-hmm. and Joe, what's that, Joanne, what's her name? Um, oh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm brain, brain. Oh, brain. gosh, I know Lily Tomlin, if she went to mm-hmm. cast. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, Lily, Lily Tomlin. Tomlin, yes. So my thing cast. is, mm-hmm. it's a melting pot, and people would love to come, and we had a Hall of Fame here mm-hmm. Yes. for all of the great entertainers, musicians, and actors that came from this region. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's something I should start a GoFundMe on. You can do it. I think yes. so. Yeah, you can do that. I don't give a damn mm-hmm. if I have to use my mama's old house. <laughs> See, at least start it. Mm-hmm. Right. At least get, get it, it started, done. yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, because there's so many, you know, because David Allen Greer, I was just watching him on Jamie Foxx's mm-hmm. new show. Right. You know. And and my main problem, excuse me, cut mm-hmm. me off, mm-hmm. but one of the main problems that I'm working on um, with some people mm-hmm. is that we have a problem being a Detroit musician or artist, marketing mm-hmm. Detroit products. Our recordings, we can't get them out of here. Right. They're stuck mm-hmm. here. Yes. And that shouldn't be like that. All the money that's here with General Motors, Dan Gilbert, mm-hmm. we need to have a way of marketing Detroit products globally. Yes. That's something we got to solve, you know. Mm-hmm. And I have to go to L.A., to New York, to go there. Mm-hmm. And we got right. more we industry got here. here. Exactly. 
Because, yes. baby, when they get these electric cars jumping, mm-hmm. it's going to be popping in here. It will be. And it's going to be popping here. Yes. Ralph Armstrong. Thank you, thank you, and who more thank you. I don't know no Ralph. Ralph in jail, lady. <laughs> some some dude Ralph, snuck who? in the studio. That's how you know it's hot in here. It is well, very Next warm. time I come, I'm going to bring my <laughs> swimsuit. You know? I just let y'all know it's hot in here. Woo. Yes. I thought I saw Satan sitting yes, back there. Yes, Ralph, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you taking your time. Is that what this to is? To come and grace time. my presence. Oh, your pr- my presence. presence is just beautiful, beautiful. On Jazz Cats, on WJZZ Oh, wait a cool minute. TV. I'm not finished before you get off the air. Yes. Now, you see my hat? What does it say? Negro League Baseball. Why am I wearing this? Why are you wearing it? I'm not sure why you're wearing it. It's a new I hat, was though. a baseball fan, and not mm-hmm. was, am, still mm-hmm. am. But something happened that I, it brought me to tears. And I don't know if a lot of people are aware of this, especially uh, black Americans. Major League Baseball officially recognized all the records of the Negro League base players and incorporated them with the Major League base players like Al Kaline, Babe Ruth, wow, yes, Turkey yes. Stearns, all of them. Uh, Josh Gibson, wow. they're all at Cooperstown now. There's no separation mm-hmm. Negro Leagues. They are major leagues. And Beautiful. that broke me. I don't know. People mm. don't know about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a blessing. I, I never dreamed I would see that happen. Mm-hmm. That wow. brought me, and I give baseball credit for that, mm-hmm. man. That I couldn't believe it. For years, mm-hmm. I grew up, and they would always talk about, oh, you know, well, if, if Josh Gibson would have been in the, the American League, now his records are there with Babe wow. Ruth and oh, everybody else. Oh, that is beautiful. They're not Ooh, segregated. Right. Now. I think that's wonderful. And that's a beautiful thing. I'm done thing. talking, y'all. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Jazz Cats on WJZZ Cool is TV. That what this is? Yes, WJZZ I this Cool was TV. Hour. No, no, after hours is at seven. Ha, ha, ha.